and you deserve a great praise. Lord, we lift our eyes to see your glory. Lord, we open our hearts to receive your love. Lord, we engage our minds to understand your truth. Lord, we offer our songs to praise your name. Lord, we still praise you. No matter what we are going through right now, Lord, we praise you and we lift you up because you are God. Lord, we know you're still healing. You're still delivering. Lord, you're still setting me in free. Lord, if you heal this morning, if you deliver, if you set me in free, Lord, we'll give you the honor and we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Lord, in the name of Jesus, be healed, be delivered, be set free. Put your hands together and give God some praise.
few directions. Is that all right? Yes. Amen. I got to give you a few directions. So if I could have your attention, amen, just for a brief moment, amen, because there's a few other things that we want to do, and we're going to let you go home. Amen. But I want to encourage you to let your faith have priority. Amen. How can you do this? Amen. If I was to pass this mic around, how many really have a scripture of faith that you repeat or you recite? Amen. How many of you really have a scripture that if I was to pass this mic that you wouldn't stutter, you wouldn't stumble, but you were just like that, it'd roll off your tongue? If you don't, I want you to get one. If you don't, I want you to get one. And you need to start repeating it every day throughout the day. Mind trusting the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thy own, in all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall. That declares it right there. Anytime you hear the scripture say what he shall do, you can go to sleep. Huh? You can go to sleep and know that it's going to happen. That's one of mine that I, I try to say as often as possible because even pastor faces fear. I had a fear of how many would not be here today. Should we or should we not close the doors of the church? But this is the place where the people come, should come. You go to work? Huh? You go to the restaurant? You go to the mall. You, you interact with some other people on these other places. Why not come to church? I know I ain't going to get too many. Amen. But I'm just speaking the truth. But listen, we are in obedience with our government, as Ella White stated. Amen. So we be obedient, amen, and do what they have instructed of us to do with those guidelines. But we're going to continue to practice faith greater than the Bible. I said we're going to continue to practice faith in this house. I know there are a lot of churches, amen, that are closed. I'm not going to put my, my mouth on them. They have reasons. But I want to encourage you, amen, because we're taking some precaution that I want to make you aware of today. We have been formed by our national church, amen, our national bishop, Bishop Amen, Bishop Blake. Amen. Amen, and we have material in the hall. And I hope that after you leave out of here that you go by and pick up one of those pamphlets, amen, that we have. There are four different pamphlets that we have out there in the hallway on the white table. It is my desire, amen, that we put that information out there so that you know what your church is saying, what your church is doing to protect you even when you come into this house. You need to know that we're doing as much as we possibly can, amen, to protect you. We're just not loose and fancy free, amen, from sanitizing, amen. Whatever doorknob you touch coming in this, coming, by coming in this house, you need to know that it was sanitized. Whether it was a doorknob, whether it was a door handle, if you went to the restroom and you flushed the commode, it was sanitized. If you turn the faucet on, it was sanitized. If you flip the light switch, it has been sanitized. How do you know that, Pastor? Well, I'm the one that did. And listen, I can say that to get an applause, to pat myself on the back, but every now and then when God gives you a vision, you need to be the one to do it. Listen, we got some cleaning crew here that I know I could call on many of them and they would do it. But the Lord arrested my spirit yesterday and say, you go. You do what needs to be done. So when you stand before the people, you can tell them with assurance that every doorknob, every light switch, every handle has been sanitized. And you know what? It's going to get done again. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes. It's going to, because we care about you, your safety, your well-being. Amen. Listen, I'm mad about what the enemy is doing. 
He's attacking the church. He's attacking the church. Many are here now uh, that are not here today because, and, and, and it's okay because awareness have been raised, amen, that we need to practice safe. Amen. We need to practice those things. Amen. I know we got sanitizers, we got hand wipe, but tell somebody soap and water is the best thing. Warm water and soap is the best thing. Every time you go to the bathroom, I hope y'all washing y'all's hands. Amen, somebody. Amen. We got plenty of soap around here. Amen. If we run out, shame on me, but we're going to have some soap and some hot water. We paid the gas bill, so we got some hot water. We paid the water bill, so we got some running water. Amen, somebody. We are putting some things forward so that you will feel safe and comfortable. Lysol has been sprayed. So don't worry about the seat. Amen. If you're going to catch something on the seat, Lysol has been sprayed in the atmosphere to fall and kill those, those germs. I think Lysol, they say they kill 99. All right. Not 100, but 99. But that's pretty close to me. That's close enough for me. I think my faith can carry me that other 10%. Amen, somebody. Amen. We are going to do what we need to do. But listen, if you have a fever, if you have a cough, if you have a cold, please stay home. We don't want to infect anyone else. If you have a cough, if you have a fever, now listen, don't get in a panic just because somebody clear their throat that's sitting next to you. Please. Please don't. 36 inches. Amen. And every now and then I have a little old, amen. And just by talking about this, somebody <coughs> it's psychological. It's psychological. Amen. But listen, we are doing something. If you notice down the aisles, we have more tissue down the aisles. And one other thing that we're doing, you can get one of these from the usher. If you cough, sneeze, amen, they tell you to do it in your arm. But if you have a tissue, you can grab one of these when you come into the church. Get one of these from the usher. What is this for a pastor? To put your tissue in that you cough, that you blow your nose, that you sneeze in. We don't want them in the back of the pew. All right, all right. All right. That is not practicing good hygiene. Right. Somebody have to put their hands in there and pick that out. This little bag that has a zip on it. I branched out. I didn't get the ones that you fold. I spent a little bit more money. I got the ones that you can safely zip and secure. And on your way of exiting the church, there will be a container for you to drop this in. Is that all right? Is that all right? Amen. These are some of the things that we're practicing, that we're going to practice, that we're putting in, and I like to call them best practice hygiene. All right. Can I say that? Best practice hygiene? Amen. That, that, it's a word that many of you that may work in, in business, that you know, you heard that these are some best practice steps that we take. Amen. So we're bringing that to the church today. Some best practice hygiene examples that we're going to be doing around here. Amen, somebody. Amen. We're trying to cover you as much as we possibly can. Thank you, Lord. I don't know if you noticed, there's a few squirt bottles that no matter what exit you came in, of some hand sanitizers with a Kleenex beside that. Thank you, Lord. We're trying our best to do all that we can so that you will be comfortable. All right. You sneeze in your hand, get your little squirt. I believe that even the ushers have some back. Is that right, Dick and Frollo? Mm -hmm. Even the ushers have some when you're passing by. If you hold out their hand, they might know what you mean. Amen. And they're just going to go to squirt. Amen. 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 So as pastor, I had to get up and, and, and talk about these things. Amen. Because I want you to be safe. 
I want you to feel that you can come in here and worship God like you've never done before. Amen. Amen. And release all those fears of your mind. Thank you. We met with, amen, the department leaders, amen, and we told them, we talked with them about these things that, you, uh, that we're talking with you about as we move forward, amen, amen, and we kind of altered some things that we're going to be doing, amen, but I want to let you all know, amen, department of God can arrest my spirit. God has arrested my spirit until it has been sanctioned by the government for us to do some certain things. We're going to move forward. Amen. Amen. We're going to move forward. Yes. Amen. Yes, I made the statement last night. Amen. We had an emergency meeting because that's what ministry does when things like this happen. Amen. And I told them that, amen, that we were going to cut out some service, but God said you need to move forward. You did say more prayer, more power. Amen. How can you get more power if you're not praying? Amen. So this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. This is a revised order of service. Amen. Amen. We will have full Sunday morning services. Sunday school, prayer, Sunday school, Sunday morning. We're going to let you out. Amen. At night because we want to have the church sanitized and redone before you come back for a next service. We'll come back Thursday night for one hour of prayer. Amen. We will come back on Fridays for our noonday prayer from 11 to 12. Amen. This is going to be the order for the next two weeks. This is what we're going to be doing. This is what we're going to be doing. I want you all, I'm saying this because I want you all to spread the word. Your church is not closed. Amen. Until we have been notified by the authority, we must move forward. Amen. Sunday morning, we're going to have a full service. We will sanitize, amen, in between, amen, give us that time to do what we need to do. Sunday night, come back Thursday, one hour of prayer, 6.30 to 7.30. We'll let you go home. And for those of you that can come on Friday from 11 to 12, we're going to be praying. Amen. How does that sound? Amen. Can you all meet me here at those times? Amen. We really need to pray, you all. If there ever was a time that the church needs to pull together and pray, the world needs an example. Yes. I'll say that again. The world needs an example. For God, I can't, we can't say that enough. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. You continue to practice good hygiene, good safety, sanitize, and, and all these things because it's real. It's going on. And what a lot of people don't know, amen, we just now getting excited, but it's been here for over a year already. Y'all didn't know that, did you? You've been hugging, you've been kissing, you've been shaking hands, you've been dapping, amen, been loving on one another, amen. But we understand, and listen, listen, if your neighbor don't want to hug, thank you, Ella White, for bringing that out. Be respectful. If they don't want to shake your hand, be respectful. We're not going to get upset doing this. We're not going to get an attitude about this. Amen. But we're going to ex ex respect everyone's privacy. Amen. But I tell you what, my arms are wide open. My arms are wide open. If you need a hug, I need a hug. And I'm just going to cover myself. I'm not saying nothing about nobody else. Respect their privacy. Amen. We're going to do that respectfully and be okay. Y'all hear what I said? We're going to be okay. We're going to still be this, that what our slogan is, a church where love flows because God is in control. A church where God is really real. Come on, put your hands together. Good God, ah, good God Almighty. Hey! He's blessing
right now. In spite of what's going on on the outside, the Lord is blessing me right now. My God, my God. Hallelujah. We're standing. We're standing all over the building. Hallelujah. His word time. His word time. somebody in this house right now. He wants to heal somebody right now. Deliverance is in the house for somebody today, right now. Get your mind off of the virus and focus on Jesus because he wants to heal you everywhere you He is. Yes, there he is. There is a word in the house for you today. I say there is a word in the house just for you. Amen. You're not like others. Amen. Afraid. You're not afraid. Amen. You're here today. And I believe you come to receive something from the Lord. You come to receive an encouraging word. Amen. A word that lets you know that you can make it regardless of what the world is saying right now. You know why? Because faith is on your side. I dare you look at somebody and tell them, I got faith. I got faith. I got faith. Ah. Oh my God. My God. Mm. I'm on the winning side today. Hey! Good God of mine. Let me do this. Amen. We got a man of God that is getting ready to come. Amen. And I believe he's going to say something that will encourage you, that will inspire you to hold fast to the faith. That's all we got in our saints is faith in God. There's no thing too hard for God if you only believe. Are there any believers in the house on the day? Believe, believe. Amen. I want you to receive at this time. Amen. The assisting pastor of the Greater New Bible Way Church. Amen. Of God in Christ. Amen. He's going to come, amen, and speak a word, amen, into your life today. A word of encouragement, amen. A word to let you know that you can make it in spite of. God's got something for you. Come on, lift that hand and say, God bless. God bless. God anoint. God anoint. Elder White. Elder White. I tell him to preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We give glory to your name. We know your name is above every name. God, we thank you. Father, we bless you. We glorify you. We thank you for each and every one that are in this room on today. Father, we ask for your wisdom. We ask for your knowledge today. Yes, yes, Let your word be a factor in our lives today. Yes. Lord, we bind all fear and all doubt and all unbelief yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. God, we thank you today for allowing us to assemble together one more time. Yes. Father, we pray today that the word will go forth. Heal those that are sick. Loose those that are bound. Father, we pray that the word would go forth today to even quicken the dead. Lord, we thank you today for the manifestation of your power in our midst today. God, we give glory to you for you alone are God. There's no other beside thee. Bless this house. Bless this man of God. Father, we thank you today for establishing your truth in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Give them a good hand praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're so thankful to God for being in our midst today. Truly we are engaged in a conflict.
Satan is real. And we have all know that in this country, and not only in this country, let's say the world, we're dealing with a virus that we call the coronavirus that is a deadly virus if it can be very fatal. But you know, this is something that Satan will use to destroy the faith of the saints of God. Now we certainly, we take every precaution that we can do is doing things that practice good hygiene. Washing your hands when you, you know, after every touch and going in and coming out, you want to make sure that you take care of those, those habits. Those are habits that we should be doing anyway. Isn't that right? It shouldn't take a virus to scare us into doing the things that we're doing. But those are the things that we should do. You know, somebody said at one time, cleanliness is next to godliness. That is a true saying. It's not biblical, but it's true. Isn't that right? But we do understand that we are working with our government and following the guidelines that has been addressed to us to do so. And we're certainly praying for them. The President of the United States, we're praying for him. Because every decision he makes will affect you, whether it's directly or indirectly. Indirectly. It's going to affect us all. What we see now is what's been spoken of in the Old Testament concerning the last days. What we're experiencing now. So I'm not here to scare you today, but I hope I can say something that will bring your faith a scale higher than what it is now. Because our confidence is not in our government, and that's what everybody's looking to. Our schools are shut down. Isn't that right? Because of our concern. See, there's a difference with concern and fear. Amen? We are precautious because we're concerned. We don't want to carry it home with us. We certainly don't want to bring it wherever we go. Isn't that right? But we never fear even death. We don't fear death as being a righteous one. Because death is sure to come. Amen. It's going to come one way or another. You're going to meet that rascal somewhere. But when you meet him, you can say that I'm not afraid, for my life is hid in God through Jesus Christ. Somebody shout glory. Amen today. So we're thankful today, and we certainly honor the Lord. And, uh, you know, uh, we want to be careful with our children, with our senior citizens. We want to take uh, precautions. We want to love them, and we want to check on them, especially those that are living alone. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Some of them can't get out and buy groceries. And, and this is one thing that, you know, sometimes when you age and begin to get older, some things you don't want to learn. You, you know it, there's some things that we need to do, but we don't want to learn. Sometimes we hate changes. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. But sometimes we're forced. Amen. Some of you may not even have an internet address, I mean an email address. But you're forced sometimes to get one. Amen. When you have to learn how to get online, when you can't go out and you got to order your food to come in to you. Those are changes that we're uncomfortable with sometimes. Isn't that right? Amen. You know, uh, there's some of us that don't like to use the cell phone to pay bills. And sometimes a situation like this may force you Amen. to learn to use your debit card online because you sometimes fear of somebody taking advantage of you. But change is like sometimes God put us in a predicament Amen. to talk to us. Amen. Sometimes we're so fast moving that God, nobody can, we don't have time for family. We don't have time for, uh, you know, we, we, we don't have time to sit down and eat as a, as a family anymore. Amen. Amen? Come home from work and you just throw three or four McDonald's burgers on the, on the table and say, let's eat. Amen. Somebody say amen. But sometimes things bring us to a point. 
But I rejoice because, not because of the, 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 the virus, but because of what God do, because I see God doing something in the midst of this thing. Somebody say amen. 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 So we're thankful to God and I'm honoring this, this man of God today, Pastor Roger. Let's show some love for him today. Amen. Pastor Willie Rogers, First Lady Nora Rogers, God bless you. Amen. Amen. I heard this First Lady Mother Leona Rogers. So good to see her here today. Amen. 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 I hear Church Mother Mother Danders, God bless you. Amen. Missionary, Missionary Hobbs, God bless you. Deacon Davis, I hear Deacon. Amen. Our First Administrator Jackson back in the back, God bless you. And certainly to these great men of God, amen. Elder Vanderbilt did a great job to us this morning. Amen. Did a great job. Feel it quick. God bless each of you, our visitors, our guests, to the saints of the Most High. So many of you could have stayed home today, but you're here this morning. So we're praising God for your presence today. God bless you. I want to call your attention briefly, and I'm not going to be before you long. I want to call your attention briefly to the book of Exodus, the 15th chapter. Exodus chapter 15. We got some other things that we're going to be doing this morning. And amen. We thank God that we're dedicating a baby to the Lord today. Amen. amen. And to each of every one of you today that are here, uh, I want to talk to Deacon Jackson and I want to speak to you very briefly after service. We know that we have our pastor and wife anniversary. And we want every member. Somebody say every member. Y'all saying it's so weak. Come on. Say every member. Every member. Come on. Here after service, then immediately after service, move yourself to my right, to my left, and your right. We're going to have a good conversation. Amen? Amen. God bless you. From the book of Exodus chapter 15, and we'll begin reading at the 25th verse. Well, let's read, start at the 24th verse. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the water, the water was made sweet. There he made a statue and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them. And that's a capital H, meaning God tested them. Come on, somebody. And said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandment and keep all his statutes, I will not put none of these diseases on you which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. All right. We'll read a couple more scriptures here throughout this message today. And I want you to repeat after me. After, after your deliverance. Your deliverance. Remember, that, remember that. I am the Lord, am the Lord that heals. Yes. Come on and give God a good hand praise today. Now this was after God brought them out of Egypt. God delivered the children of Israel out of slavery. He brought them out. He brought them to a place that we know as the wilderness. In the wilderness, there are many things in there that can come, that can really, uh, that you have to deal with in the wilderness. You have snakes, you have wild animals, you have all kinds of things out there. But they stayed there because they began to tempt God with unbelief. Unbelief is one thing that will hinder your prayers. I want to speak of another virus that's been in the world for a long time and we still have not gotten control of it. And that virus is called fear. Fear is a paralyzer it will neutralize your faith in the living Christ. Yes, fear is something that God did not give us, the spirit of fear. Amen. Now all of us has a level of fear, and that level of fear is a consciousness that we have 
that will make us aware of things that are around us that are not safe. Yes. Right. Or when there's danger around us, that subsequence actually lets us know not to go in that direction. Sometimes people say, something came upon me and told me to go the other way. Naturally, there's fear in us. But the fear that God that, that we have, that God gives us, is a fear of reverence. That fear of respect, just like a child has for their mother. They're not terrified of their mother, but that mother is an authority figure in their life. And that mother is the one that gives them instruction on what to do. That's the fear that we all have. And then there's a fear that comes that calls us. And that would cause us to feel like we're hopeless, helpless, and no, there's no one that can assist us. Isn't that right? Amen. That's the torment that Satan has given us. Amen. And the Bible said that God has not given us the spirit of fear, Amen. but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Amen. That sound mind is that mind that will cause you to go to sleep at night. And not to worry and stress yourself about tomorrow that you have no authority over. Somebody say amen. amen. The Bible said take no thought of tomorrow. For tomorrow will think of itself. None of us that worry about tomorrow can, take, can add one cubic inch in your height. Neither one of us. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. But here are the children of Israel. They begin to complain against Moses, the man that God used them to bring them out of Egypt. Moses was a prophet of God. Moses was a man of God. Moses was a prince in his right. Moses was a man that walked with God. Isn't that right? Moses saw God. Somebody say amen. Not many, there are very, very few that had the opportunity to see God. Moses saw God. Moses was that close to God. But yet, Moses went to the mountain to pray to seek God on the behalf of the children of God. Yeah. But yet, they complained that Moses, we're in this wilderness and we, we can't even drink water. The river is bitter. Yeah. Now, isn't that something how God can use a man of God? God showed Moses his tree. Moses cut it down and put it in the water. And the bitter water turns sweet. Some of us have drank a lot of bitter water in our life. And some of us are still drinking it right now. But let me tell you something. When God begins to reverse that situation in your life, he will turn your moaning into laughter. He will turn your tears into joy. The Bible tells us weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning time. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes, we're dealing with an issue today and, 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 and the world. Look out how the enemy has really has vexed our mind. I, 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 you, when you look on social media, folks are fighting over toilet tissue. Yeah. Fighting over paper towels. Yeah. If the only thing, you see, what we have to realize is the greatest thing to do when there's a great disturbance in the, in the atmosphere is to calm down. Amen. Take a breather. Yes, Collect your thoughts. Yes, Try to purpose your next step. Amen. What am I going to do next? Hallelujah. Because anytime you do things in haste, you're going to overdo it. You're going to miss something. You're going to lose something. In other words, you'll put yourself through what folk are doing right now. They're spending money that they have not budget for. Right. So when you do that, something in two weeks down the road is going to go like it. Right. See, we had a hot now, and that's what the devil wanted. We had a hot now, we got to spin, 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 spin. Two weeks from now, you're broke, 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 broke. Because we move on our emotion and not by your spirit. See, if you listen to your spirit, your spirit will guide and direct you in the right direction, and you will not make the mistake that many have already made. Somebody shout amen. amen. Yes, but God told Moses, and the water was turned sweet. 
Now the blessings of God are conditional. Amen. And see, that's what we fall short of because everybody wants wealth. Everybody chasing a dollar bill. Everybody want to their, get their hustle on. Everybody's doing something trying to make a buck. You, you, you earn one dollar, you spend two. Somebody say amen. Everybody's out there trying to out-hustle somebody else. Even in this chaotic situation that we're in now, somebody's trying to see how they can take what you got. Isn't that right? But do you not remember that Christ delivered you? The Bible said if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. This is the life that God has given us, that we should walk in dominion and authority. Even when there's a plague on the earth, we still walk in dominion and authority. Even when there's a situation that's out of our control, Jesus still rules. He's still in charge. He's still Lord of Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Listen what he said here. He said, and he said, if you diligently heed to the voice of the Lord your God, not your voice. Amen. See, we get our information from people. Right. Yes. Amen? Yes. We get our information from people. Information that we get most of the time has not been proven, Amen. has not been researched. Amen. Word of mouth. By the time the word leaves one person's mouth, it'll change 20 times before it gets to the third person. Is that right? The first person said the elephant was pink. By the time it get over to the left side, the elephant is purple. Isn't that right? Some people say the snake bit them. The other person said the snake swallowed them. So which is true? But the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 53, who has believed our report? Yes, to whom is the Lord, arm of the Lord, revealed unto? Yes. Glory to God. This is the greatest time for the greatest revival to ever happen on the face of this earth because the Bible tells us when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift the standard against Satan. See, Satan is running on borrowed time right now. He's seeking whom he may devour. But I thank God today, though he slayed and said, Job, yet will I trust in the Lord. My God today, if we learn to lean on Jesus and the Depend upon his word. We can walk through the valley and the shadows of death, and none of those evil things will come not our dwelling place. Are you just gonna say church where love flows because God is in control? A church where God is really real? Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Word Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday.